has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, what is his name? unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. I just read you Exodus 3, 13 through 14. And as you know, God's word is always blessed. Amen. Heavenly Father, may, may we pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, once again for allowing us to come into the house of the Lord. Thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing our pastor and his wife this morning. The pastor to preach the word to us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for each member that made it here safe. I ask you, Lord, to watch over each member and watch over our pastor and my family and church. Lord Jesus, we come to you thanking you for the musicians and the choir. Lord Jesus, we come to you just wanting to praise your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, church. Um, we're not going to prolong the service. We're going to turn it over to the full Amen. church we would have it during the Sunday evening that you have to come back and be baptized but the Lord has showed us that there's a way to put it inside of the worship experience on a Sunday and so we're glad today uh, to have this privilege so at this time uh, let's prepare uh, as our candidate will enter the water that we will baptize her
Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to thank God. I do believe this is her mother that's here today. Amen. 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 God bless your mother, and we thank God for her sister, I think, also that was mentioned. Amen. 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 And so we thank the Lord she has some family uh, that is biological here with her. Amen. 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 But we are also her family as well. Because she is now a part of the body of Christ. Amen. And so we uh, certainly thank God for Angelica today uh, for her coming. And thank God for the invitation. Uh, and I'm going to say this to Kyra. Thank you for being a witness. Amen. Amen. That, that, that's what we have to do. Amen. And just get them here and then let the Lord do the rest. Amen. So, so God bless you at this time. We close this moment just with prayer. And then we're going to turn you into the voices for the opening song. And then Elder Reed uh, will take us further. All right. Let us bow. God, we thank you, oh Lord, for this day. Thank you for allowing us to come to this moment in our worship. Thank you, Lord, for this young lady, oh Lord, who made her confession of you on last Sunday. We thank you, Lord, for her accepting, oh Lord, that baptism physically, oh God, that we have now taken care of. We pray that you will continue to bless her life. Continue to let her grow now in the knowledge of you and how, oh Lord, you want her to live. Bless her family, her mother, her Lord, her sister, Lord. Remember them, oh God, is our prayer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. The song said, I just want to thank you for blessing me, for saving me, for keeping me, for waking me up this morning. Somebody going to get excited about that in here. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to save you, but he did. He didn't have to keep you, but he did. He didn't have to love you, but he did. Thank you. I just want to welcome our on-air crowd, our Facebook fans, and our YouTube group. And we don't want to take it for granted that you would choose to be with us on today. And we just want to thank you for that. We thank you for your love. And we pray that that something will be said on today that will break your heart. Something that will be said on today that will draw you in closer to the Lord. Something that will be said that will help you to change your walk on whatever it may be. But something that will be said most of all to let you know that God loves you. So as we continue on, I turn it back over to the first election of the choir.
Sunday of October. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Certainly to God be the glory. Yeah. For yeah. How far He has brought Thank us. You. And we are so grateful to be here today. Almost feeling like, as they say, a summer day, uh, even though we are officially by the calendar in the month of more, more or less in the season of autumn or fall. And so, so we thank the Lord just for a little more favor. Uh, with the weather, because we know being in where we are, that's, that season going to change. And so, so we're glad to see you today. Uh, glad to look up on your faces and certainly see that God has blessed you. Amen. Anybody know that he has blessed you? Uh, and don't try to look too far, but just know when you woke up this morning, another brand new blessing. And so we give God praise even for those things that we take for granted. And so we uh, want to thank you, brother, and again, thank Elder for leading us to where we are. Thank our voices for that opening selection. Uh, we are still excited. Uh, those that might have been here on Friday night know we had a wonderful time. Yes. Uh, with that reunion musical, it was really something to see. But you had to be here in person to really know what I was talking about. You can go back, as they say, and look on YouTube and uh, Facebook. But it was wonderful to see so many feel that choir stand. Amen. 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 Pastor Proto was here, and we were talking about, boy, we remember those days when, when our choir stands were full. Amen. And we know that that time has changed, but... Well, thank God for those voices that he blessed you with. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's what we ought to give God praise for. Amen. Because God can really do some great things with a few. And the reason why he wants to get the glory out of it. And not us sit back and look at what we did. Amen. So God bless you. We're going to do this uh, at this moment. I do want to have Angelica to come. And we just want to give her this right hand. A fellowship, and this is just more or less a handshake, a welcome uh, by us uh, to let her know she is officially, we consider her a member when she joined, but, but just by the steps that we take, amen, we just follow the procedure that has certainly been passed on to us. And so, so I'm asking her that she would stand and prepare to face the congregation, and I will come down and prepare to uh, do that. Jesus to witness, especially when the power of the Holy Ghost has come upon you, quickly you are to be witnesses of him. And so, so we thank God. We want to get ready. It is time at this point, I do believe, for the altar call. And we know the need for prayer, and I want us to keep on being people that believe in prayer. Uh, Sometimes I think we want God to move quickly every time we pray. But there's some teachable moments that God take us through that we can learn the value of waiting on him. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so, so I just encourage us, especially where we are in America, we got to keep praying for our country. And we don't just stop there. We want to pray for other nations of this world. Um, we need to be concerned with what's going on in Israel uh, and 
the war that they are now in, uh, even with Iran being involved. Uh, we know that there was one going on with uh, them in Palestine, but uh, we know that these are just some signs of our time. But we don't want to forget about Ukraine and what's going on with them in Russia. But we got to pray. Because do we know how blessed we are to be in a nation where, listen, we don't have other nations invading us. That says something. Uh, not for us to take it, as they say, highly, but be humbled by that. Because the United States certainly is blessed that we don't have all these countries around us trying to bomb us. It can happen. And, and I just want us to be grateful for how God is even favoring us. But, but we know there are some problems in, in the USA. Amen. And, and especially in that political realm, which I pray that we pray for. Pray for certainly our leaders. Uh, that the scripture tells us if we do that for them, uh, then it can help us live in peace. And so, so let's remember to pray even for President Biden as he finishes his uh, office, his president, let's pray. Uh, some may have forgotten that he's still president. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and the reason why is because of all that's going on between the two candidates. And so let's even pray for that matter. Amen. Amen. I was saying in Sunday school that we need to pray for what will happen for this country uh, after November the 5th. Yeah. November the 5th is, as they say, D-Day. Amen. And so we have to pray because uh, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know the outcome. Amen. But our prayer is that, that it would be for the better of this nation. <laughs> Amen. For the betterment of it. And so, so let's remember uh, this, that you that know you can vote, let's vote. Right. Let's not just take it for granted. You don't know who to vote for. Amen. Amen. I, I tell everybody, if you just want to talk, we'll talk but I'm not gonna still tell you who to vote for. <laughs> Amen, and, and especially with our young people. Let's, let's encourage them. Uh, if you have turned 18 years old, go ahead and exercise. You know, well, make sure you're registered, but let's uh, go ahead and do that because uh, it can bring a change. And so, so we just ask that we continue to be prayerful for what's going on in our country. I know I'm not the only one disturbed about what's going on, but I know who to pray to. I sure do, I know who to call on. And, and, and if there's somebody who can handle my complaints, it's God. Yes, yes, and he don't mind uh, if I got to complain to him because he can handle it. And so, so I want to encourage us as we prepare to come now to the altar today. Let's remember all of our sick. Uh, Brother Willie Jones wanted us to pray for him today. Uh, he's not able to be here, but let us keep him in prayer uh, along with uh, the, the grosses, Yvonne and Sandra, the mother and daughter. Uh, we want to keep um, also our auntie, uh, Murder Skipper, uh, who is all the way down in Brookhaven, Mississippi. Hey, let's keep her in our prayers and, and then others that you may know. If, if you come today, let's whisper somebody's name uh, to the Lord today. All right, so let's come. Those that want to join us down here, uh, Elder Reed is going to lead us in our prayer this morning. Uh, but as he prepares himself, let's now gather, if you so choose, uh, to come down and join us. But if not, uh, if you can stand where you are today, that is will certainly be fine. Amen. But let us come now. Let's come believing. And let's look to the hills. Certainly from which cometh our help. Amen. Because the psalmist will declare that all our help, it comes from the Lord. Amen. 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 So at this time, let's prepare for Elder Reed as he comes before us. Praise the Lord. As I was listening to what Pastor was saying about the, the world today, and that there are so many trials that we may be experiencing during this time, 
my mind quickly turned to the good news, which is Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. Anybody believe that today? Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. And I only can speak for me, but you can speak for yourself if you believe that same thing. Amen, somebody. I also want to add one more family name to the prayer list, and that's the Sombri family, of which us, our own sister Cheryl was laid to rest on yesterday. But the good news is, the good news is that there's no more pain. There's no more sorrow. I've had my share. Of lives, ups and downs. Anybody believe that? Though God's been kind, uh, trials I've had few. Then, when you think about it, I guess I could say. that you don't see me as myself. 
but you see me through the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the sacrifice he made. That day when he died on the cross. Rose with our power. We thank you, Lord. Father, in spite of the situation that we're in today, in spite of the politics that we're going through today, in spite of the changes that are experiencing today, we know Jesus is the best thing. And we're leaning and depending on you, God. That whatever it is, you will cover us. You will keep us. You will continue to protect us and save us, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God, that whatever we're in need of, spoken and unspoken, oh God, you are the Alpha and the Omega, which means that you already know before we think it. And you've taken care of it before we thought it. We thank you, oh Lord, for the hands that we hold. Father God, taking our minds off of our own situation, oh God, and focusing on the needs of the hands that we hold, oh God. Father, we thank you. Because we know you got it, God. You got it, God. Surrender it all to you. No take back. We don't want these things back, oh God. We surrender our life. We surrender our love. We surrender our help. We surrender our finances. We surrender our minds. We surrender our heart. We give it all to you, oh God. And we just want to thank you for the outcome. You are God all by yourself. The King of kings, the Lord of lords. The Prince of Peace. Wheel in the middle of the wheel. The rose of sin. And we thank you. That you're not a man that would lie. And you cannot lie. For you're God all by yourself. Thank you once again. For who you are. Father, we pray for the man of the house. We pray, oh God, that the power of the anointing falls fresh on him. That he will give us an agape word. A right now word. An unconditional word. A life application word. And not only will we hear it, but we will be doers of the word. Be with us, O oh God. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God.
grateful people today that are in the house. We certainly got a lot to give God thanksgiving for, and so we certainly are happy for that selection. That is one of our own in the city of Erie, uh, Ferris Evans Jr. was pastor now. Uh, that is the one that brought that song uh, to life. And certainly we thank God. Give him credit for it because they say uh, we don't own the copyrights. <laughs> Amen. And I don't know if you have noticed uh, that that's what some uh, churches uh, have done because they don't want to get in no trouble uh, over nobody's song. But thank God for the graciousness of those who believe that they don't mind us singing their songs. And so we thank the Lord for that because that, that's an easy song uh, that anybody can get with. It's so, have a, such a personal note on it. I just want to say thank you. And it says for all that you done. Amen. Food on my table. Yes, that's, that's just something to get by. Yes, that's right. And I know that you're able. And so we give God praise uh, right now. I want to thank him for uh, his prayer this morning. And, and I always love how he ministered. Uh, doing that altar call. Amen. Amen. And you just got to give uh, some credit or just recognize somebody's gift and how God uses them. Yeah. Amen. He just set it up for a prayer. Yeah. Amen. 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 And so we're grateful to what God has brought us. Uh, I'll always give God praise for being able to stand before you uh, and give him this shout out. Thank you. Uh, for just letting me be able to stand today. Uh, never just take this for granted. Uh, certainly in 34 years, uh, I can say the Lord has been good. Yes, Lord. And add that power to me. He has been good. And, and one thing I give God glory over is that he has kept me well. Uh, as they say, when I have not had to miss uh, a day off, as they say, for sickness, uh, that's something to give God praise for. Amen. Because I know there's a lot of my brothers uh, who certainly have had to deal with sickness uh, and other complications, but I just stand as a blessed person giving God praise. And, and, and one thing I give God praise is that somebody prayed uh, for me. Because they had me on their mind. And they took a little time out to pray. So God bless you, saints. And I'm glad to see uh, my friend, my brother, Reverend Roosevelt Dixon, and his wife. God bless you. Both being in our presence today. Amen. Because he's been a brother beloved throughout 30 years or more. Uh, and he knows that nothing's going to change. How I feel about him. And so I do thank God for his presence today. Hallelujah, God. But we uh, have roles because it is time that we look to the word. Uh, and I do pray that we are a little hungry for it today. Yeah. Amen. That is some expectancy. Uh, and if it is, then I want to let you know God certainly has a word for you. Yeah. Amen. And so, uh, if you will, I would like for you to look with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 10 and 11. And we want to uh, look at these two verses uh, that we would like to present today and then give a subject uh, just to go with it. Isaiah 55, beginning at verse 10, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11, so shall my word that be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Amen. Thus read the word of God. Uh, our subject uh, today is, since he said it, we can believe it. Amen. And I pray we give that some thought. Since he said it, we can believe it. 
That's about that. We thank you, O oh Lord, for letting us stand again. We pray that you give us power, Lord. Give us strength. O oh Lord, give us all that we need through your spirit so that we can fulfill your will. Use us as our prayer that the people of God will be blessed and that someone will be convinced. Use us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Amen. We are grateful to God uh, for this direction uh, on this day as we look at this Old Testament book, uh, this great Old Testament prophet uh, who has 66 chapters uh, that is in his book alone. And it just about equal the 66 books of the entire Bible. Amen. I hope you know there are 39 in the old, 27 in the new. You put it together, you mathematicians, you will get 66. And so, so it's interesting that this prophet Isaiah, whom the Lord called, and you can probably look in the sixth chapter of Isaiah of his writing and see where he had this encounter, where he's had a vision, where the Lord called him to be a messenger uh, to his people. But as we look today, uh, and as I look at it this way, saying this particular subject, uh, I'd like to say that there's nothing like believing what someone says to you. Especially if they have been a person of their word. Now, I know we are missing that today. Because our, our word, as I was raised, ought to mean something. It ought to be our bond. It ought to describe not only what we say, but who we are as a person. You know, we ought to be either someone who mean what they say or not someone who does a lot of talking. Because I know we all know someone who says one thing and then don't do it. I'm going to put it that way, don't do it. You might say they do something else, but I'm just going to say they don't do it. Because we, and, and I hate to say this, we might be one of them. Because in this present age, you know, we hear a lot about people who give you their words and don't come through with what they promise. You know, during this political season, and thank you, Lord, for letting us take a look uh, that we are presently in, we have some politicians who will tell you what they promise to do just to get your votes. Amen. And, and I pray we are paying attention because what they will do, they will get that vote. And finally, if you get them elected, then they will change everything that they promised they would do. And so, so what we see, brothers and sisters, it causes some who we look at and we see that they are not who they say they are. Because right now, there is a whole lot of knowings. There's a whole lot of fake news. And it's spreading like wildfire. Because I am just, at times, a little disturbed with the internet. Uh, and, and it's a good thing. But then you have others who are using it to be destructive, to listen, to spread lies, to just cause people to even be afraid. And, and, and when we think about those who like to just talk that good talk, uh, listen, all I can say is just don't fall for it. Because all of us in our life need to be a, a listen, a good judge of character. Because as children of God, and that's who we are, uh, or those who believe, uh, I am reminded of Psalm 118, verse 8 and 9. It says, if you will discover what that psalmist says, it is better to put trust in the Lord yeah, yeah. than to put what confidence in man. But it goes on to say it's better, and I like the tone of this, he says it again, it is better to put trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Yeah. Now why did I add that? Because that talks towards our leaders. I know we don't have princes in the United States, 
But we have presidents. Yeah, right. We have, as they say, senators. We have congress persons. And we have what? Governors and mayors and council people. And, and, and what that says to us, brothers and sisters, don't put a whole lot of confidence in them. Because right now, listen, he's encouraging us not to put all confidence in people. And, and, and I'm not trying to write us off because I just believe there are some that we can put a little confidence in. Amen. But this is a warning to us. Don't put it all in no person. That's right. Because it would just be great to live in a world where we could trust everyone and not only trust them, but also believe what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So y'all know we ain't living in that type of world. That's right. Amen. You see, if you're, if you're paying attention each day, you will see that we are not living in a world where we can trust everybody. Amen. And, and, and it's good that we be observant concerning the times. Right. Listen, I don't know about you, I'm, I'm really concerned about November the 5th. Well, right. I, and, and, and my prayer to God is that he let his will be done first. Yeah. Yeah. I want to let you know God already yeah. knows the outcome. Yeah. We just got to catch up to it. Yeah. And so in the meantime, we got to do what's right. Amen. That we can be pleased when it's all said and I don't care about these that's trying to, listen, send threats, hmm. cause fear. You better know your God. Yeah. Yeah. And the people of God got to stand convicted that the God we serve will take care of us. Yeah. I'm just glad, brothers and sisters, that even though we live in this world, some are inclined to believe people before they believe God. I hope you ain't in here today. Because you better believe God first. But, but, but isn't it good to hear and read what the prophet Isaiah has presented today? He has written something that shows to us that God has promised to keep his word. These are words which, as we understand, were written for us to believe. And, and, and I heard Elder say this, God is not a man that he should lie. Yeah. Neither is the son of man that he should repent. But as you finish that verse, listen to what it said. Has he said and has he shall, shall not do it? Or has he spoken it and, it shall, and he shall make it good? I just like to suggest, brothers and sisters, you can believe God's word. I know we want to believe what everybody says. Yes, there's that, that temptation, but, but there are some people we can believe by the way they carry themselves. This is the measuring stick I see. Watch how they carry themselves. Watch if they word measure up with who they are. Now listen, a person's character tells a lot about them. Your character will take you. Listen, where your gift can't keep you. And I hope we hear that right now. There's a lot of gifts that people have. Amen. That they are riding on and they have poor character. Listen, that's attached to that gift. But you got to realize that God wants us to be people who know how to judge good character. Because when it comes to God, you can believe what he says. Listen, that's my argument today. You can believe what he says. Some may say, why? Well, first of all, his word never returns empty. It's right there in verse 11. He said that word that goeth forth out of his mouth. It shall not return unto me void. That's the Lord speaking. God's word ain't coming back to him empty. Unfruitful. But his word goes out to do things. For us to believe that if he said it, we can believe it. And I'm glad the prophet Isaiah speaks in behalf of God. He lets us understand that God has sent a word forth from his mouth. And he sends it intentionally that it don't return back to him void. Isn't that good that his word never returns empty? His word will be fruitful. Yes, it will bring results. 
if we understand why he has sent it forth. And I'm glad that he declares this, brother and sister, let us see that God can be trusted. Yeah. I know some would like to say that, suggest that, God, I can't believe what you say, but yes, you can. You can believe every word that God utters from his mouth. Yeah. In fact, listen to what he did for He gave us a written word. Yeah. And listen, to validate what he has said. Yeah. And it's still our choice. That since he said it, that we ought to believe. I'm real glad that Isaiah was able to share this, my friends, because he was letting us see that God's word is true. And whatever he sends it out to do, it's going to return to him with victory. Amen. That's just one way of putting it. It's going to return to him with some results. God never sends a word out in vain. Even right now, as I stand before you, this word may be just for one person. But I pray it's for every ear that's listening. It's just proof to us that his word never returns empty. And I'm so glad that God can prove it to you because guess what? If he speaks to you through somebody and that word comes true, it comes back to God and let him know that yes, it can come back empty. Right. We got to understand, yes, if he believed, listen, it says he said, we got to believe it. Yeah. It ain't based on how we think about it. It ain't based upon our opinion or our feelings. God wants us just to trust him and take him and his word. So I'm glad, brothers and sisters, that that's one reason that we can believe. But secondly, his word accomplishes what he desires. It's right all in verse 11 because but it shall what? Accomplish that which I please. God want to let you know that I'm sending out intentionally. That it's going to accomplish something. And then, listen, it's going to do what I have already desired it to do. Listen, we may not realize that that word is on us. That word has been what? Spoken to us. That word has been witnessed to us. And, and whatever God's reason for Letting it go forth is going to accomplish what he pleased. Yeah. Yeah. You got to rejoice on the fact that he says, yeah. which I please. Yeah. He didn't ask what Adam's thought was right. or what's going to please me. Yeah. He didn't ask you what that word went out to do to please you. Yeah. But God let it go forth. Then it will accomplish what he intended yeah. it to do. Yeah. So when God looks at it, he is pleased. God can rejoice that my word went forth and did exactly what I wanted it to do. Yeah. Yeah. And isn't it good just to let God be God? Yeah. Yeah. To let God, listen, brothers and sisters, do what he wants to do. Yeah. Say what he wants to say. And I know there's some things God said, if I'll be honest right now, that's hard to bear. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Whoever you are in Christ, I don't yeah. care how mighty, yeah. severe you are. There's some things that God says that's hard to stomach. But you got to understand his word is good for you. And it never will, listen, return to him empty. And it certainly will accomplish what he wants. And we got to believe that today that God is going to have his way. Nobody can stop him from having his way. You can try all you want, but God is going to have his way. Listen, we can be disobedient with you, but God is going to have his way. Listen, you can be hard-headed if you want. God is going to have his way. You can be stiff-necked. It ain't going to stop God from having his way. Listen, it might offend some of us. Oh, yes, it will, but God is going to remain who he is. And so I'm glad for his word. Anybody glad for his word? Yeah. His word. Listen, will do just what he has set out to do. So I'm glad that his word accomplished what he desires. And then finally, his word achieves the purpose that it was sent. I like what verse 11 ends. It says this, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent. Now here it is that the prophet of God goes to the people of God. He gives them a word, and that word is to accomplish something 
that God has intended them to do. But here is the thing that we got to understand. It's going to achieve the purpose that it was sent. But here is the challenge. Sometimes we get it. But then there's sometimes we don't want to receive it. But those who get it, you can let this be known that it's going to achieve the purpose that he sent it for. Now, now here's something if you want to get excited. God told me to tell you he's going to bless all of you right now. Listen, listen, look, look, at, look, at, look, look, at the, look at the reaction. That shows you, brothers and sisters, his word achieves the purpose that, he, that it was sent. That somebody believed that God is going to bless him. But if I turn around and say God is going to curse us, somebody be wondering, Lord, why? What did we do? But it's just the fact of us understanding his word achieves the purpose that it was sent. Listen, I'm reminded of Balaam, and he was told by Balak to go and curse the people of God. Amen. But if you know that story, that the, listen, Balaam had to learn that I can't curse whom God has blessed. Listen, he tried to take the message, but here it is when he had a beast that he was riding, and he tried to make the beast do this or do that. He beat on the beast, but he didn't ride what the beast saw before it. Listen, it was an angel of the Lord standing. Listen, and Balaam could not see, but but it goes to show you, brothers and sisters, you got to value what God says. And, and whatever he says is going to achieve his purpose because he's sending out to accomplish something. And, and even today, I believe God is still speaking to us. But in a time like this, we need some encouragement. We need to believe that God has not left us, but he has stayed on our side. And, and I believe there's a witness today that know that God has not forsaken you, uh, nor has he left you alone. Uh, I'm glad that David said that when mother or father would forsake me, uh, then the Lord will take me up. Uh, I'm glad that I found out on this journey. Uh, sometimes people uh, can let you down. Uh, sometimes they can make promises uh, that they cannot keep up. Uh, but I stand as a witness right now uh, to encourage someone. Uh, there is a God uh, that will never lie. Uh, there is a God uh, that will always tell the truth. Uh, he's a God uh, that we can believe. Uh, since he said it, uh, here is our part. Uh, we ought to believe it. Uh, I wonder uh, right now, uh, is there anybody here? Uh, believe it uh, for yourself. Uh, Believe that if God said it up, I can stand on it. If God said it up, I can believe it up. If God said it up, I can trust it up. I believe up. God up won't never lie to us. Up. All he wants up is for us to believe up, to obey him up, to be good servants up. What the good up? I gotta let you understand this. Up. That God that I talk of. Up. He is the same God uh, that did something. Uh, he sent the word. Uh, you know the story. Uh, in the beginning, uh, was the word. Uh, and the word uh, was with God. Uh, and the word was God. Uh, but I like uh, in chapter 1 of John, uh, if you drop down, uh, that word uh, became flesh uh, and it dwelled among us. Uh, well, who is that word? Uh, that word is Jesus. Uh, you know him, uh, the Lamb of God, uh, the Prince of Peace, uh, the Lily of the Valley, uh, the Bright and Morning Star, uh, the Road to Shed uh, is Jesus. Uh, that one uh, who hungered and died. Uh, I know you know the story, uh, but I got to remind somebody, uh, Jesus died uh, on the cross, uh, hung on the cross, uh, from the sixth uh, to the ninth hour, uh, until finally uh, he gave up the ghost. Uh, what did he do? Uh, he died. Uh, anybody know he died? Uh, he died uh, 
feel the sun uh, refuse to shine. We uh, die till uh, the earth uh, reels and rocks uh, like the junk is making up. Uh, we die uh, until the veil of the temple uh, breaks from top to bottom. Uh, we die uh, until finally uh, it was declared. Uh, this is uh, the Son of God. Uh, ain't it all right? Uh, but you know what? Uh, the story don't end here. Uh, they buried the word. Uh, in a tomb, uh, the word uh, stayed in the tomb. Uh, Friday night, uh, the word uh, stayed in the tomb. Uh, Saturday, uh, all day Saturday, uh, but Sunday morning, uh, here it is. Uh, Sunday morning, uh, Jesus uh, got out the grave. Uh, did he do it? Uh, he's alive. Uh, anybody know what? Uh, he lives. Uh, he lives. Uh, he lives. Uh, that fights up. Uh, that he lives. Uh, Let us 
so simple that if you confess, and that means if you believe or say it for yourself, I believe in Jesus. Right now, that moment, he can save your soul. And one of the things that we need to be concerned with, I know some are young, but you still need to be concerned with that inner person, that soul. That when it's going to end up one day. And one thing that we got to remind many today is that Jesus is going to come back. But will you be ready when he comes? Will you be one of them? That, listen, take that flight back to go home and be in glory with him. Now Jesus that we speak about is one day returning. We don't know the day, we don't know the hour. But we are believing that when the time shall come, we can be ready. Because we made our confession clear. We said, I believe you, Lord. I want you to save my soul. One thing that we know is that if anybody be in Christ, the scripture is clear. You are a new creature. All things shall pass away, but behold, all things become new. Yes, Lord.
Mary was killed. That's the 30th, 2017. And it was seven years last Sunday, well, Monday. And I know the Bible says seven is completion. So I don't know if all the, the hurt and the pain and the anger and the animosity, I got a lot of that in me. Because I miss my baby so much. Yeah. And I, took, I took a lot of things out on some people in the church. And I would like to apologize for that. That's not me. Jesus right now. God, we pray for our sister. We thank you, Lord, for first a confession, Lord, to want to make things right. Because we are taught in the word when we learn to forgive each other, then we have ourselves right for you to heal, for you to help us. And so, God, it is our prayer right now that you will take this up off of her. Lord, it's not her burden to bear. Yeah. But, oh, Lord, it's for you, for yeah. her to trust you. Oh, yeah. And believe that you can let her live freely yeah. of all this pain, yeah. this sorrow, Lord. Yeah. And so, God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. God, that you will do this for her. Bless Mario, God. Yeah. Oh, Lord, that he don't be a hindrance, but yeah. open up his mind to understand. Yeah. Oh, Lord, what his grandmother is going through. Yes, but, God, we pray her strength. Yes. We pray her that you will give her peace. Yes. And that she can trust you yes. with her burden, oh, God. Oh, yeah. Because, oh, God, we have to understand we got to give it to you yes. in order for us to be at peace, yes. for us to rest. And so, God, do it right now. Yes. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Then, oh God, we pray for this knee, oh God. We pray for healing in that knee. Oh God, that whatever is going to have to happen, Lord, Lord, just be there, making everything all right. So God, bless our sister. Let our sister know we love her. Oh Lord, let our sister know we care. And, and let her know that she's not alone, oh God. Because you have promised to be with her. So God, we thank you. We give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We thank him. We thank him. Amen. And we praise God for the courage to come forward and seek forgiveness. Amen. Because some things a lot of us won't do before others. But she came wanting to ask for forgiveness. And I pray that it is, it is received, brothers and sisters. There ain't no time to hold on to anything. Amen. Because if somebody wants us to forgive them, then that is something that we need to do. And I'm going to say this quickly. Forgiveness sets you free. Amen. Whether they want to receive it or not, you are set free. Amen. So, so God bless you, Sister Ross. We know the Lord is going to take care of it. And I just want her to believe that because I know we sometimes be afraid if we let the thoughts of loved ones leave us that we're going to forget. No, you're not going to forget them. God don't want you to be burdened with that sorrow. Because that thing can lead to stress and other health ailments. So, so let's, amen, keep her in prayer. And I know this has to be a hard time. This is going to be seven years. And then Brother Ross, uh, who let, who passed away on last year. Uh, and so those are some hard things to swallow. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And some don't know how tragic her daughter left here. Yeah. Amen. But as I said, not something I'm going to share. But some know. Yeah. But, but just pray a strength, okay? Yeah. That's what we can do as a family. Yeah. Especially show our love that way. Amen. Yes. So God bless you. We again want to thank God for the young man, Carl. God bless you. Amen. Uh, amen. God bless you. Thank the Lord for him today and for him coming. Uh, we're going to uh, get ready to do this at this point. We normally, in the past, as they said before COVID, would do this at the end of the service. Uh, but we just want, we're just going to go ahead and do our Lord's Supper. Because uh, what I have done, I have allowed it to uh, take place for viewers. Uh, some on Facebook uh, may be wanting to take it at home with us. And so we allow them to take it with us as we take up the table. So brother, we're going to ask that you will prepare yourselves uh, to come now and get our table in place. Amen. We'll ask our ministers uh, to come. Amen. Evangelists, if they want to come and join us as well. Uh, they are certainly uh, welcome to come. All right, so we're going to do what Jesus, as they say, brought in order. Because we remember it was on that Thursday in which the night that he would be betrayed, he was with his disciples just last time. And this supper that we like to refer to as the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper as well, was done amen, as something to remember the sacrifice that he would, he would make. And we know that sacrifice is. That was his body that would ultimately be hung from the cross. He would be beaten, crowned with thorns, would be placed on his head. All of those things would follow what took place on that night in that upper room. And so we Presently, brothers and sisters, do what the scripture says. We show forth his death until this, until he returns. So this is a lasting thing with the body of Christ, that we are commemorating uh, his sacrifice. You know, those elements that we eat, drink, bread represents his body, cup, his blood. 
And he says, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. So we're going to come down, uh, me and Elder, and we're going to get ready to have our prayer offer. And we invite everybody that is a Christian, a believer in Christ Jesus, you can take up this with us today. All right, so, so we just want to let you know. All right.
that's his blood. This we do in remembrance of him. All right, God bless you. Uh, the uh, brother will be back down the aisle to uh, receive your cups. He'll be back Church's 100th anniversary book are due today. Print ready to Tara or Reverend Andre. Tickets for the 100th banquet celebration will be available today. If you have paid, please see Sister Donna Brown or Reverend Andre next Sunday after morning worship. Pastor Adams will have a ministry leaders meeting tomorrow. October 7th at 6 p.m., finalizing plans for our 100th anniversary. Pastor Adams will be preaching next Sunday at 4 p.m. at the Greater Rock Church, 527 Ralston Street, in the anniversary celebration of Pastor Darnell Johnson. All those that can go are invited. Next Sunday, in honor of Breast Cancer Month, we're asking everyone to join us in our 100 Shades of Pink, a Pink Out Sunday. From the Indiana Brotherhood Missionary Baptist District Association to all pastors, officers, auxiliary leaders, and members, this correspondence comes to notify you that our fall board meeting of the Indiana Brotherhood Missionary Baptist District Association Incorporated will convene at the Zion Progressive Cathedral International Church, 1169 Connecticut Street, Gary, Indiana, where Pastor Norman J. Harrison II is our host pastor. Our meeting will be held on Wednesday, October 9th at 6 p.m. and on Thursday, October 10th at 6 p.m. Our presidents should be ready to present your ministries, auxiliaries, objectives, and fundraising activities for the year to help the Premier District meet our aspirational goals for the upcoming year. We are continuing to ask that all who are willing would give a sacrificial gift of three, two, or one dollar per week to our Gideon Gift Blessing Ministry during each session, fall, spring, and annual, to help our district excel and exceed. If you have any questions, please contact the moderator's office, Pastor Dwight Mobley, Senior Pastor, Moderator, Reverend Andre B. Adams, General Secretary, Sister Carla R. Smith, Corresponding Secretary. Come and join Chicago's own One for Christ in our 20th year anniversary celebration concert on Saturday, October 19th at 7 p.m held at Holy Temple Cathedral, Kojic, 15912 Lincoln Avenue in Harvey. I have been a member of this ministry for 15 years. This is sure to be a great celebration. Many special guests to appear. I am responsible for 20 tickets. I would appreciate the support of my Pilgrim Rest family. And we have one card of thanks. 
Thank you. To my Pilgrim Rest family, just a few words to say thank you all for the prayers and encouragement during my time of bereavement for my sister, Linda Edding. It's just good to know kind and loving people. Love, Alberta. Amen. This concludes our announcements. At this time, will our visitors please stand and state your name, church, and pastor. showed up on Friday night for the choir's um, 100 reunion, and please charge it to my head and not my heart, but I truly want to send a special shout out to our ushers. Amen. They were in the house, and everybody had a great seat, so thank you so much, ushers. Have a little token of appreciation for you for being here for us. Also, um, the youth and young adult parents, can you please meet with Sister um, Ranisha G immediately following the service? Thank you. So God bless you. Briefly, 